Hello, welcome back. This is Paul Minahan. I am excited to be with you for the second video of uh, the Minahan painting series on how to uh, do your own faux. Um, it's a little controversial today because I'm introducing a uh, technique that may have gotten a bad rap. You may be guessing it right now, but it's the sponge technique. Sponges are amazing things. They're creatures from the ocean. These are not made in a factory. These are real, they're like fossils that we're using. And um, it's part of the evolutionary chain. It's really interesting if you look it up. But we're all kind of related to these things, so please respect your, respect your sponge. This finish right here is what we're going to create today. Um, there's actually three colors on a base coat. And I'm going to walk you through it as we do it, but this is the final product. Again, as in the last video, the base coat is Metropolitan. Um, it's Benjamin Moore color, or a paint, or a Metropolitan color, AF690. Okay, um, something I've said in you know my first video, um, you want to be thinking about your color, your color combinations, how it's all working together. Uh, this time I decided to have a little bit of fun and I threw in a pink color. It's sort of like, oh, I'm not supposed to use pink. But um, I did it and it actually, I think, creates a nice effect, you know. And the whole point of this is to have fun. And, um, like, you don't have to be perfect, so I thought I'm going to have fun and share it with you. If you want something more conservative, just use simple tones that are, uh, I would say, the uh, monochromatic color scheme. Different shades of the same color. You can't go wrong with that, and you can still have a nice effect. This sponge technique is fundamental to faux finishing to create granite and other stone looks. Um, so that's just when I'm asked to do a granite finish. I'll do something like this, but in blacks, grays, and browns. So, without further ado, we're going to prep off this and uh, get to work. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So, sponge painting 101. Um, these were what they look like dry. You want to get your sponge wet and wring it out real well so it's not dripping or anything. I have my base coat, which I already told you, Metropolitan. Then I'm going to go, by the way, my base coat is my lightest color. Then I'm going to my darkest color, which is a blue-gray color. Then I'm going to go to my medium color, which is a greenish color. And I'm going to do an accent pink before the green. And then I'm going to finish up with the metropolitan color just to do touch-ups, okay? I've got the paint watered down a little bit, and I have a palette here with wax paper on it. I'm going to pour some on. You know, one thing I want to show you is every sponge is different. These two sponges are completely different. Um, so it does make a difference. You should look at your sponge. And some of them have these flat areas. I try to actually avoid printing with those flat areas. Um, I try to use kind of the points of the sponge more. But this one I've cut in half so I can cut in on the edges to make it a little easier to make that pattern consistent on the edges. Okay, So here we go, sponge, paint with water in it. I'm going to charge up the sponge and then just blot it out a little bit and we're going to start right up here. Like ragging, you want to be um, careful not to overlap directly on the pattern you just did, but you are blending your areas a little bit. So notice how it, it doesn't look like separate pieces here. It looks more consistent. And what I'm not doing is I'm not going like this. I'm starting in one area and moving out. If you're doing this right, you don't need to press very hard. 
and you want to kind of rotate a little bit each time. Try to avoid doing the exact same thing. By the way, I'm not using the whole sponge. I'm only using this area. So don't try to get your whole sponge saturated. You're not going to be able to control your pattern. Also, I'm not too worried about, you know, I can see some thick areas here. I see those, I'm not worried about it, because in the end, I'm going to just be able to adjust all that. Alright, now, I put it on pretty quickly. Um, I can see here I've got kind of a scalloping effect from this, so when I do the next color, I'm going to try to go in opposite directions. You see this kind of scalloping effect and a little light area right here. So that means, that's because my hand does this direction. So the next, the next color I do, I'm going to change it, okay? So you're always breaking your pattern, in a way. I'm, your only pattern is to break your pattern, okay? Okay, we have done the first step, the dark color. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Like I said, there's a little pattern on it. We're going to break the pattern as we go. The next step, da, 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 pink. So obviously, I don't want to do a lot of pink, but I think given uh, the colors we're using, this kind of greenish gray, a little bit of the red color, red family, the pink really complements it and gives it a little bit of excitement. Not only that, but if you notice over here, it almost turns the darker blue more of a turquoise color, just by your eyes kind of blend the colors together. So, anyway, uh, also this sponge I'm using has a smaller pattern than the first sponge, and that's purposeful. Um, the You can see this is much bigger pattern, this is smaller and pointier, and I'm doing that because I want less of the pink to show. So I'm using the sponge with a smaller pattern, and I'm going to go a little more light with the marks, but they are going to be consistent. Okay, here we go. Here's the pink. All those patterns are boom, boom. They're like little insect feet. Okay, here we go. Light. I'm actually putting this on, and I'm adjusting as I go. Okay, we've got the pink on. Okay, it's I don't know if you can see it in the camera. I can see it here. It's just a nice little warmth into it. Okay, so the next color now is my mid-tone color, which is, again, my crazy mixing of all my samples that I have, but it's basically the metropolitan color with some blue, little black, and watered-down paint. When I say watered-down, I just mean like 15% water, not like 50%. You don't want it drippy. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start up here. And again, just go consistently. And on the camera, you probably aren't going to see much of anything because this dries darker. But remember, this is where we're going. What this middle tone is doing is it's getting rid of too much of this dark kind of color underneath. It's helping to soften the contrast while we're giving it more depth. I'm, 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 I know, I know what I've done, what I haven't done yet, but while I'm working, I'm using all my peripheral vision to, uh, scan for spots that I think are showing too much of that dark blue color underneath. 
And the finer and more consistent the marks are, the finer and more elegant the finish will be. Okay. You want to make sure your edges look like the middle. They look like the same. Don't go lazy on the edges. Don't leave your edges without the same amount of paint on them. It's um, the easiest way to tell a beginning finish from a more professional finish is when you don't pay the same attention to every square inch. Okay, by the way, I had mentioned before on the blue color that I started with that it was scalloping. You know, I'm still seeing some pattern, but for the most part, it's all blending and getting more random. So that was this color. Our final step is going to be using the base coat itself, which is the light color in this finish, and doing some final touch-ups with the base coat. Okay, I'm back to do the final, uh, the final coat, which is actually um, a little bit of the base coat work right over some of these darker areas. You can see I'm looking very close to the finish right here. We're just adding a little bit of the base coat back in to brighten it up. And I'm just going lightly. And you know what, it took me years to get used to the fact that latex paint dries a shade darker. And I'm just going very kind of light amount. We're really it's sort of like weaving when you think about it. We're really actually weaving this finish in from one layer to the next. You go to your edge, just, you know, and a little bit there. And usually I come out maybe three or four inches from the edge, and then I go back to my bigger sponge. So in a second, we're going to blow dry this, and then I'm going to talk about uh, what's going to come next in the next video. Also, um, you know, if you need to get a hold of me, my number's up there. And in addition to all this decorative painting um, and murals and everything we do, I have a crew of five painters, and we do regular interior, exterior painting. Um, it's really the gravy, or the meat and potatoes of our business. This is more the gravy. Okay, um, tape. I want to mention this tape. The tape I prefer is uh, frog tape. It is, uh, you pay a little more, but it's worth it. It's great for doing lines, it really blocks any bleeding, and it's pretty much safe on your surfaces. So I say pretty much because if your surface wasn't painted correctly the first time around and it pulls paint off, that's because somebody didn't do their priming and do their prep stuff. Okay, so when you pull tape, you want to pull down and away and pull it slowly. Look at how nice it's blending with the uh, the first board. You can barely tell that there's a line there. I want to be gentle. Okay. Come down here. Okay. A lot. Um, this is still drying a little bit here, but you can see how it's all blending really well. Again, this technique is great for a beginner because you can stop at any point. If you get tired, you can just stop. On some techniques coming up, you're not going to be able to stop. You have to keep moving. It's more like a performance. Um, you really have to be, be on the ball when you're working. These are much more user-friendly. On the next video, we are going to start talking about reductive techniques. These are both additive techniques, which means all we're doing is adding paint onto paint. We're layering on. Um, the next level, I would say FO 102, is reductive techniques, where we're actually using a glaze with paint, we're applying it, and then we're removing the glaze in an artistic way with either a rag or a sponge, or there's just you know hundreds of tools you can use to do that. 
but it takes more skill. It's kind of like the, the, the two level finish, but um, maybe you're ready for it. Let's try it out. Thanks so much. It was fun. Hope to see you again soon.